they've always wanted a dog. Um, they both kind of have slight allergies, so it's kind of funny that they want to foster. Um, but no, they're absolutely amazing. They're very meticulous um, with what they do. So um, even, even the puppy is beyond where I gave them a guideline of where the puppy should be in the first month, they're well past that. We got a message yesterday asking what else they could do. Just they're so focused, they, they do everything. They're quite active too, and that was important to me. So the puppy, for, as they're training them for the first six months, we want as much exposure as possible. So they have um, a ski chalet in Tremblant. She's from Toronto. So she's like, can he go to Toronto? Can they go to Tremblant? Like, Absolutely. The more that the dog can get in the first few months, um, it's, it makes them more solid. Um, so they're amazing, but they've always wanted a dog together. So they'll see how they do after the first six months. And I think most likely they're going to be getting a puppy. <laughs> um, <laughs> most likely. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're two absolutely fabulous people that are doing so beyond. And they have no connection to the military whatsoever. They just really love the community and where they're from and want to give back. And that's, that says something for two people who are not from this area. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Vicky and Scott are fostering and training a lab puppy for six months before he is gifted to a local military veteran. There's a lot of help that they provide. Um, so there's a lot of you know, just food, taking care of uh, vets, uh, just the logistics. Um, they provided a manual uh, with all the, like lots of training advice. Um, so I would say it's, it's like having a dog but on training wheels. Yeah, so we have them for six months. Um, and we get to come to training uh, once, I guess, once every two weeks or once every week. Um, and then we do homework in between. And after the six months, then he goes to his handler. While giving Atlas up at the end of certification will be difficult, Vicki and Scott explain how they expect to get through that moment. A bit of a trial run for us. Uh, so we both have allergies to dogs, but we both love dogs a lot. And so we were kind of curious whether our allergies were not severe enough to limit us from having a dog at home. So this is a great way to sort of test that out while also like providing a service to someone locally. Um, and yeah, uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, both of us talked about, you know, if the allergies are not a big deal, well, giving him up at the end of it might be, and that might be very, very hard. Um, but we both sort of keep him in our mind that this is a big help to someone who needs it much more than us. And that, I think that's going to be that's going to make it a lot easier come yeah. the six month time frame. We kind of just keep saying that he's like a superhero, and we get to train him for a little bit, um, and then he's going to be a huge help to to someone who has like gone through a lot and has done a lot um, for their community. And so it's nice to be able to give back. You know, we like to think of it as a completely benevolent act, but it's it's not. We we get a lot out of it, um, so it's it's not you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not just solely beneficial for the person who's becoming uh, the, the eventual owner of the service dog. You know, he gives us lots of love and, and affection and we learn a lot in, along the way. So it's, it's definitely a great experience. Atlas, at nine weeks old, is described as passionate. He's um, so... S yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to gush now. <laughs> um, but he's so smart. Um, he's doesn't look it at the moment. He doesn't, yeah, I know. He's like very food motivated. Um, so making, like it's made training very easy. Um, I've been kind of trying to explain his personality to my mom and she described him as passionate. So he's passionate about food, about us, about nipping, about sleep, about his toys. So he's like just generally very passionate and I think he's going to make a really good service dog. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I would say he's uh, somewhat on the vocal end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, he's a puppy, so he's going through teething, and he makes these hilarious noises that uh, it's hard to tell whether he's enjoying himself or in extreme pain. He's just sort of like <laughs> whimpering. moaning, whimpering, <laughs> while also just like looking like he's having the time of his life. Yeah. But uh, passionate. Yeah, passionate. Passionate <laughs> about uh, his chew toys. Yeah. <laughs> Follow your TV and watch my six service dogs as we follow two pups, their foster families, and learn why they are giving back to the military community.